for being here. We really appreciate it, joining us. Um, we will be having other classes also in the next three weeks. It would be great if you can join that too. Um, just one quick question, if you're comfortable answering it. Have you guys ever had a fall? Okay. I have. Okay. Were you guys able to recover from it by yourself, or somebody had to help you? Somebody had to help me. So, falls can happen for many reasons. As you guys mentioned, your diagnosis, it comes with deviations in how you move, so it can make you more prone to having falls. You can also have muscle weakness. So, obviously you need good, strong muscles to recover from it and to get up, so it's good that you guys are coming here to exercise and to maintain your strength. The other reason why you could have falls is because of taking a lot of medications. So some medications can interact with each other that can cause signs of symptoms, such as dizziness, that can increase your chances of falls, or even taking so many medications that are supposed to treat the same issue. The um, other thing you have to be aware of is if you have any cognitive impairments, you always want to check your meditation status. I know it's kind of hard to remind yourself, you know, you got to check your behavior, um, how's your mood every day. If you don't feel like checking that, you can always ask a family member to do that for you. Um, if you see any changes, you can always notify your doctor. You know, obviously you want a good mental status to not have a fall and to recover from it well. The other thing is having any visual impairments. In some instances of stroke, you can have changes in vision. I don't know if you guys have experienced that, but there's also other diagnoses that can also change your vision. And obviously, you need your vision to walk, sorry, to what? see where you're going, or to move in your wheelchair so that you don't have a fall. Um, if you notice any changes in your vision, Oh, gosh, Obviously, go to your doctor so that you can get that checked out. Another question I have for you guys is: Do you guys did you guys do any home modifications for your diagnosis just to keep yourself safe? Okay, has that been helping you guys? Okay. So, what kind of things did you do to change at home so you decrease your risk of falling? Well, the main thing I did was remodel my shower. Uh -huh. A wheelchair accessible shower. Okay. Perfect. And what about this overall space in your bathroom? Have you made it bigger to where you're able to move freely and not have to scoot okay. everywhere? Oh, good. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's the number one thing is that we look at. A lot of houses aren't built to have big enough doorways. One for walkers, two for wheelchairs. Um, so that's a lot of times the things that we have to modify to make sure that you're not having to modify how you move throughout your home and make it easier. So as you guys mentioned, it's good to have the handrails around the house so that it'll give you an extra supportive balance. The other thing is to have good lighting in the house because you want to see where you're going. You can also put a flashlight near your bed. That way when you're trying to get up in the middle of the night, to either use the restroom or whatever. You have a source of light near you so you don't fall either. Good. Um, the other thing is you can get no skid mats around the house so you don't slip on it. You also want to make your bathroom area safe. As you mentioned, you have a chair that can go in. You don't want to slip in the bathroom either. You can also have grab bars filled in your bathroom so you can hold on to that while you're using the toilet. You can also get elevated toilets if it's hard for you to get up from the toilet seat. There's one thing that I want to emphasize is that rugs are a huge issue that people undermine. Yeah. That a lot of people don't understand that that little tiny lip, uh, it trips everyone. Yeah. Um, so definitely think about non-skid and also just eliminating the rugs themselves. Yeah. Any questions? And make sure your shoelaces yeah. are always tight. Really. Always. Yeah some fall demonstrations to show you if, for whatever reason, you're going to fall, how to fall safely. Okay. okay, so number one reason for falling is just a simple trip, like I said, over the rug. 
Um, so basically, we're going to use this as our rug. Dylan's going to be our collar. Um, basically, you want to make sure that you're always tucking your chin, so that way you protect uh, your head, things like that. We don't want to further cause any issues. Um, the other thing is that we're going to try and turn to our side, because your side has more surface area um, than falling on your arms outstretched, which can cause many issues in your arms, things yeah. like that. Okay, so Dylan? Trip, tuck, and then roll on your side. Again, he landed here on his, the side of his thigh, which has more surface area, and not outstretched. And then backwards is usually because of slipping on water, slipping on ice, things like that. Same concept, tuck your chin because you're protecting your head. Try not to fall straight back and don't tuck to where you're lying out on your bottom because that usually causes issues as well. So again, try and twist and land on your side. The thing that I heard from the physician aspects is that once you fall, it's kind of a panic, so no matter what you do, to some extent, you're going to extend your hands. Now, practicing the moments of kind of how Dylan was going slow-mo, we can do exercises to get you through the motions, so that when you do fall, it's kind of a set thing to where, okay, you have that tuck and roll versus the outstretched hands. So in terms of assistive devices, usually we say just get them out of the way, no matter what, because yes, usually you are going to land on it and it's not going to help you, especially relators. Relators are not the most stable assistive devices, probably the least stable. Um, so any home, I would say that's usually our thing. Just if you know you're going to fall, if you can't prevent it at that point, just push it out of the way. So how do we get up from a fall? Um, some tips for home is always have some kind of stable surface in each room um, and in multiple, multiple spots if you can um, because then it's easier if you're in a random area of the room you can move to that that's more accessible. So, um, depending on your diagnosis, if you have a stronger side, you're gonna be you're gonna want to use that side to help you get up. So once you have scooted all the way to the stable surface, you're gonna use the or use the unaffected side to be on the side of the chair. You're gonna go into a half kneeling position, keeping this arm extended. Use all the or put all the weight onto the unaffected side. So you're pushing, 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 and twisting. Okay. If you can use the affected limb then do so, but more than likely that's not the case. Okay, so to get up on the floor, you want to use your unaffected side or your stronger side. Um, so Paige's stronger side is going to be the left. She first is going to put her left hand on the mat to help pull her up. She's then going to go into a tall kneeling to where, yep, and then you bring your left. Now she's going to use her left leg and her left arm to lean against, push herself up, close, and system. We're going to get you standing, stable first, and then whenever you're ready, we're going to take a few steps down. We're going to walk, and then we'll be here right next to you the whole time. And then we have set up a couple of obstacles for you down there. So, I know you can't see right now, sorry, but you could, if you want, you could step on, step on both the... There's like a blue phone. You'll step with both feet, and then you'll step on a step, and then there's like another step. Just to challenge your balance a little bit. You could always take stand on this break if you want
So we're working on your static standing balance, just standing here mostly. Okay. You need this for, you know, fall prevention. Um, this is like a pre-step to how you're going to move and walk. Because okay. you want to be able to maintain your balance just staying still before you actually move it around or start walking. Okay. So show me what you've done before. You've done the squat or the walking. Well, I've done squats.